and welcome to our worship service here at New Light Church in Deland, Florida. Uh, my name is Rick Chandler and I'm the pastor. We want to welcome all of you that are watching online, reminding you that today is Communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. So if you would uh, prepare for that, if you would like to uh, take part in the service uh, with a little bit of juice and bread, and we do that at the end of our service. We also want to thank those who are sending an offering to underwrite this ministry as we are not and do not conduct uh, money raising programs and uh, we just do that on a volunteer basis and the church is underwriting our, our ministry here. So uh, whatever the Lord leads you to do, uh, we have uh, our address and everything that's on our Facebook page. Again, we welcome you and we hope that today will be uh, worshipful and will be spiritual food for you in our service. Good morning and join us in our praise medley this morning. The words are printed in your bulletin and it's still Christmas until Epiphany. <laughs>
opening hymn this morning is Oh Jesus I Have Promised, number 402, 402. Oh. Tom Oliver is uh, recovering from an illness and uh, he said he's sick and tired of being sick and tired so we hope that he uh, mends quickly. Also Virginia Wilson is still mending from a uh, surgery. Uh, Joyce Granger, uh, the pastor of uh, uh, Reverend Granger at the Cloisters uh, has been in the hospital and we want to lift her and he up. Uh, Gary Schwartz has reported good news, and that is that the biopsy that he recently had showed no cancerous cells, so we praise the Lord for that. Also, Tim Wilder is under comfort care after complications from a stroke. Uh, one of our own, uh, Doc Marcel, uh, is having some more tests run, and we want to uh, have him and Linda in our prayers. Uh, also, Bill uh, Adderman remains under hospice care, and Tyler Peden needs a complete healing, and that is possible through the grace of the Lord, so let's remember those. If you have any special prayer requests, please feel free uh, to put those on our website, and uh, Fawn will let me know about those. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, our most gracious Heavenly Father. On this first day of a new year, we come to you with celebration of your grace. And at the same time, we foresee problems and evil prevailing in all of our world. We confess that only you can deliver us from the hands of the wicked. Help us, O oh Lord, to submit to your will and to your ways, that we may walk a godly path of righteousness. We do come to church this day to not only make a public profession of our faith, but to come to confess and repent of our sins. 
those sins of omission as well as those sins of commission. We pray that you would make us a holy people in the way that you would have us do this is through our total submission of our will, our ways, and our wandering from your truths. We pray that you would give to all churches, pastors and teachers and musicians that undergird an apostolic ministry. Separate us from evil and gift us with grace, mercy, and godly justice. We pray for all of these prayers that we have just lift up, lifted up to you and also all of those unspoken prayers. We pray and thank you for the answered prayers and the healings. We pray for those that are in combat with all illnesses. We pray for our police, our fire, our EMTs, our doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. We pray for all Christian churches and their pastors throughout this world. And we pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name that taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
we said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Obedience to God or to the government. Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3, read this. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And then also, back in the book of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, and the twentieth verse, we read, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Then over in the uh, letter to Second Timothy, the young pastor that Paul uh, is bringing into the ministry, uh, we read this in the third chapter. This know also this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this source are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no farther, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Obedience of God, obedience or to government. Sadly, we find ourselves even discussing this ridiculous question. We find ourselves and we find our faith in conflict with those in power. So how are we as Christians to respond? What shall we do? Shall we put our heads in the sand and just let it take care of itself and have our church remain in a building and not address issues? If you are of the belief that your politics and your faith are separate, and that the two should never be intertwined, then you should consider not calling yourself a Christian. For your faith, biblically, scripturally, your faith is relevant in every aspect of your life. It would be like saying that my faith is good on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday I do pretty much what I want to do. If your faith is as the scripture states, then your faith is relevant in every aspect and every avenue of your life. Acts 5.29 says, Obey your leaders, but obey God first. Moses found himself in this very position with the Egyptian government. They tried diplomacy. They tried discussions. They tried working together, but Moses saw that his people were continued under slavery and under oppression and under exploitation. 
So God led Moses to lead the people against the will of the government out of Egypt. Jesus had the same problem with the Roman government. The Apostle John, Paul, same problem. It is well documented that every disciple died at the hands of the religious and the political left. First of all, this morning, I would have us consider what we do if we obey God or obey the government. Number one, we must determine and we must accept and obey God and follow God first. The Old Testament and the New Testament tells us without compromise that all authority comes from God. And any other power attempting to rule without God's blessing is at best counterfeit and always to the detriment of humanity and freedom in the exercise of a godly faith. You see, God delegates responsibility, not authority. Our government needs to understand that. That our government needs to be a reflection of what God's righteousness is. Somehow, somewhere, some way in our country, we've adopted the idea that there is the government and then there is the church. There is secularism and then there is spiritualism. We've been hoodwinked. We've been tricked. We hear, well, we believe in separation of church and state. It's not what it says. If you read the Constitution, what we're being told is that the state should never interfere with the business of the church. God delegates this responsibility. He has ordained the government to carry out his righteousness. And at the moment that our government is not carrying out the righteousness of a holy, omnipotent, sovereign God, then we need to address it. When those who have power over our liberty, our freedom, and, our, and the control of every movement that we make over our lifestyle and even our earned resources, we become vulnerable to abuse, exploitation, and inevitably slavery. The Bible is clear that those in power are God-ordained to administer the precepts, the mandates, and the laws of God, not their personal agendas. The scriptures are as clear that Christians have the obligation and the responsibility to influence and support those who see their position as servants and stewards of God. When is the last time that we ever heard any politician say that they are there to serve the Lord and to serve God for a righteous country and community? If not, they are counterfeit, and they rule to fulfill their ungodly desires of power and control. Good government must base its laws and enforcements upon the righteousness of God, and we've seen this turn 180 degrees in our own country. I cannot imagine, and in my wildest imagination, preaching a sermon like this 20 years ago. 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Psalms 89, 14 says, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. That comes from God. And God has ordained leaders and officials to follow his righteousness. They are to be his spokespeople. A quote from a man by the name of Ed uh, Vitagiliano, who is uh, on the board of the American Family Association, made this quote. We must never delude ourselves into thinking that what men can create will ever be perfect. Yet, if governments can be undermined, they can likewise be improved. Christians have a responsibility to be active in the political process. 
What more could Satan want? What more could he ask for? How much happier could Satan be than if we separate the church with politics? Secondly, we must determine and discern what is good and what is evil. What is of the Lord and what is of Satan? We do not judge any person, but we have been called to judge the actions and the issues and the outcome and the consequences using biblical truths as a gold standard. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10 says this, At what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Do you hear what God is saying through Jeremiah? <laughs> that if a country does not obey my righteousness and my wills and my way, I have some really horrible things up my sleeve that I'm going to do. That's God talking. And at what season I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plan it, and if it do evil in my sight. I'm not the judge. You're not the judge. The government is not the judge. God is the judge. Yeah. Billy Graham once said, I don't care what you think. If the Bible says it's true, then it's true. And our opinions don't mean a thing. Goes on to say in Jeremiah that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. Unless we as a nation begin to repent of our evilness, God is going to continue a nation and a government that rebels against God's covenant will suffer the consequences. I'm not making this up. We need to make up our minds. Are we going to follow God's righteousness and His truth and His word? Or are we going to continue to separate what's going on in our society with that that goes on in our church? Charles Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers of all times, said this, Carnal men love the God that they make, but not the God that made them. God does not tell us to be a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, to have a benevolent dictatorship or a monarchy. God only advocates and blesses a nation and a government that is created to serve Him. If any government expects and demands me to follow their laws, then they had better start honoring the Lord and His laws. Recently we read powerful officials are proposing that much of the COVID vaccine be first given to prisoners and even to death row inmates and then to drug addicts. Do you see this as evil? forcing you to stay home and not go out and get your hair cut, but those in power blatantly do that. And when caught, they suffered no consequences, but the owner of the business is presently bankrupt and out of business. A computer repairman turns over a laptop because it looks suspicious to him and, and he wants somebody in authority to check it out and he turns it over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The outcome of that is he's now out of business and bankrupt. Thousands upon thousands of illegal immigrants are at this moment lining up at the border of our country, waiting for inauguration, and at that day, we'll be marching in, tax-free, 
receiving all benefits, more than you and I, that they will be receiving thousands of dollars of benefits. And you and I got $600. I don't care if we got $20,000. A country is to be built upon borders. Read your Bible. Read the Old Testament. What did God spend most of his time doing with his people, with the Israelites? Establishing borders. Making a country. And then we're told that's immoral. If you tell a lie enough and enough times, there are people out there that will begin to believe it. Is that evil? What about falsifying death certificates to show that COVID was present when three bullets are extracted at an autopsy? Is that evil? What about the majority of the media in censoring information and putting out disinformation and even having a former president of our country saying that we need more censorship? Is that evil? This is not Democrat. This is not Republican. This is not independent. This is people that have made a career and a vocation out of power and control. Large corporations, Walmart, Amazon, Apple, their stock is going through the roof. And right up and down the streets of our little town here of Deland, and there are businesses going bankrupt. Is that evil? When elected officials go from a modest income to become multimillionaires, where are they getting the money? Who's giving it to them? Pastor, that's not your business. Yes, it is. Yes, it is my business. I understand and I agree with you. If you're a senior citizen, if you have underlying medical issues, please stay home. Please take care of yourself. But that's not the majority of people in our world or in our country. That's the minority. But yet somehow the majority has been convinced that they too should be locked up. The Bible says, Forsake not the assembling of yourself unless the government says not to assemble. I remind you that the seeds of, revol of revolution in our own country when they said we met in taverns, we met in restaurants, and we met in churches. Can you understand why those are the first businesses to be closed down? The government says don't go to church, but it's okay for you to go to a strip club and stuff dollar bills into a stripper's underwear. That's okay. The Bible says, Go ye therefore, preaching and teaching and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, unless there are travel restrictions. <laughs> Told to wear a mask for science. I priced mask, the ones you see everybody wearing around town, around our country. You can get them in bulk for seven cents a piece. That's what they cost. You may be able to find it cheaper than that. I went to Lowe's this week and I picked up a couple of cans. My, my wife wants me to uh, paint some outdoor furniture. And of course she wants it some weird color. So I had to look for this color in this aerosol can. And, and I was reading the instructions to make sure that it would go on the material that I was going to be spray painting. And in large, the large letters beyond the small print that you can never read, it says, please wear an approved mask. So I went right across the aisle where the approved masks were for painting out of a $3 can of aerosol paint. And the cheapest mask I could find was $18. And there was one there that was $28. 
Follow the science. Follow the science. Reports are that 350,000 people have died of COVID. And some experts say that that is exaggerated now that we're finding out that the CDC is also including seasonal flu in with that statistic. Is that evil? Is that misleading? Is that manipulation? Is that exploitation? Is that pulling the wool over your eyes? In that statistic, as I said, flu, underlying, and even motorcycle accidents are being reported as COVID. Why? Hospitals are receiving, and I got this statistic straight from a doctor at a local hospital. Hospitals are receiving up to and beyond $70,000 for every COVID patient that is declared COVID. Follow the evil. Follow the evil. Curfews in some places of our country must be in by 10 p.m. as COVID can tell time. If wearing a mask is science for protecting life, with what protection does the life of a baby have that's about to be murdered and pulled out of its mother's womb? I'd ask you to join with me. Those babies need a representative. And it appears that many of our elected officials don't give a damn about those unborn babies. But I remind you that God is the one that gives life, not you and me. And in that he's the one that gives life, you and I have no right to take it. Those babies have long been without representation. And now we're being told that in the next coming months that, that abortion will not only be found legal through all 50 states, but now it's going to be government funded. And more than that, if you're a young teenage girl and you have found yourself, and I just don't understand how you just find yourself pregnant, but if you find yourself pregnant, that you don't even have to have the approval of your parents if you're a minor to go have an abortion. But if your class is going out on a field trip to a museum, you have to have documentation. Thirdly and finally, we must determine and act upon biblical precepts of righteousness. We must vote. We must change our values of who we vote into office. You see, the problem is we don't want to change. We want God to change. And I'm here to tell you, after reading 5,000 years of biblical history, God ain't changing. God is going to be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and you can take that to the bank. Amen. If you find yourself disagreeing, not with me, but if you find yourself disagreeing with the scriptures, and then you find yourselves compromising and watering down what Christ and what the Bible says, quit calling yourself a Christian. Oh, you can be a nice guy. You can be a nice lady. You can be nice people. We can be acquaintances. But you see, you're giving out false information and it's a false witness. It's a false confession. When you believe something that is against scriptures and then you call yourself a Christian. We know that as hypocrisy and being a hypocrite. We have now found ourselves in an ocean of laws, of fraud. And I'm not picking on any political party, but you don't have to be an astute viewer or reader or observer to know that our country experienced fraud in the voting system like on both sides like we never have before in the history of our country with complete videos in context.
we as a church, we as a Christian nation, and I refuse to believe that God is done with us. I refuse to believe that we should give up our convictions. I refuse to believe that we should stop standing up. I don't care if we have three people in our congregation or if we have 30,000. When we look around in the world that we live in now and we see people who call themselves reverends and preachers and pastor multi-numbered churches, mega churches, and say it's okay to abort. And as I said last week, but you cannot be a Christian and be in the military. My friends, who in the world is going to protect your country other than the military? What did God do when his people were threatened? He said, let's all get in a big circle and let's hold hands. And we're all going to sing in Jewish language. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And we all open up a can of Coke, the drinking kind, <laughs> and say, let's just hold hands and have dialogue. I just told you a lie, didn't I? Because that's not what God did. God looked around the Israelites and he looked at the, at the men and the women who could be the most capable leaders, the best military strategists, had the best strategy. <laughs> and if you read all of those wars and all of those biblical stories of the Israelites being in conflict with the enemy, not one time. Not one time will you read where God's army was in the majority. God always wins with the minority. And it's time for we as the minority to stand up and say we are sick and tired of the blasphemy, of the unrighteousness, of all of the fraud, the evil that we see going on. We need to rekindle. We need to relight the fire of the Holy Spirit in our personal lives. For we cannot go out and combat evil in the world unless we have in our hearts the will of God. And our purpose is just not to beat the enemy. Our purpose is to have peace with God and the peace that passes all understanding. None of us want to fight. It's not in our nature. I've been accused at times of liking a good fight. Hopefully it's been for righteousness and not for personal. But God wants us to be at peace with Him and sometimes the only way to be at peace with Him is to go to war with evil. Communion. This day on the first Sunday of this year, 2021, I would have us use our time of communion with the Lord to have our calling renewed. To remain under conviction. To be assured of our salvation. To remain under God's grace. To trust in the Bible, holy leadership, and most of all, trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, our Lord, and our Redeemer. All of us like that Savior part. It's the Lord part that we have a problem with. So this, this day, let us sit down to a holy supper with Jesus. He is here. He's in your home where you are. And I would have us bow our heads and make cert certain that we are dining inside 
with our hearts and most of all with Jesus. My friends, Jesus is returning. The signs are here. And I don't want him to catch our country or to catch our church or to catch the Christian community just standing around wondering what's happening. When Jesus returns, I want him to look at me, Rick, and see that I have donned the full armor of God. And then, and only then, will Jesus say, Rick, you can put it down now. I'm here. And I'm here to take you home. Then, and only then, can you take your swords and turn them into plowshares. God is returning. My pastor and I have conversations about this all the time, about when is the Lord going to return? Uh, Thomas told me several times he wishes it was 15 minutes ago. Uh, in some ways I do too. But he's left us here. God has us here as a remnant to do something. And it's to do more than just idly stand by. <coughs> I would have you listen to a part of our ritual in our Holy Communion service, our Eucharist, the Lord's Supper. It is a confession. It's not only a confession, but it's a reminder of what Jesus went through in order to give us freedom, in order to give us liberty, in order to give us an escape from oppression and people ruling over every part of our lives. listen to this prayer Almighty God our Heavenly Father who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by the one offering of himself a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he's coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, his death, and his resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him who in the same night, in the same night that he was betrayed, there he took bread and when he given, when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and told them to take and eat. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. We're not here to go into mortal physical combat. Our country has ordained political leaders and a part of keeping peace and a part of keeping organization and unity, safety for all is to have a standing army. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus is in the army, in the Marines, in the Coast Guard, in the Navy. There's some question whether or not he's in the Air Force and I just say that for my grand, grandson's uh, reaction <laughs> and I know I will get. But yes, Christian, uh, his name, God is in the Air Force as well. And he's with the Israelites. 
And don't believe it when preachers tell you that God has left the United States of America. He's still here. And we will celebrate this through a time of communion. Father, we now ask that these elements be consecrated. And as they are consecrated, and as we partake of them, that we would now be made holy. Not through our own works, but rather through the grace of God and through the spilling of his blood, we have now become righteous by grace. Give us strength, give us courage, give us stamina, give us resources to carry out your will and your word. And we partake of now this sacrament through the grace, through the mercy, and through the love of our Lord. If you're at home, now is the time for you to have your bread and your juice. If you would, please just hold on to it. And, and that way we can all partake. here in this congregation and now those of you at home take this now a representation of the body of Christ break and eat take this a symbol of his blood and drink and as we eat and as we drink let us do this in remember remembrance of a sovereign and protective and loving Lord of freedom and righteousness. Thank you for joining with us and we hope to see you next week at the very same time at 10 o'clock here on Facebook. Our prayer is that God will continue to be with you and bless you and your home and your prayers. And now as Almighty God sits at the throne of heaven through the grace of his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.